Gracias por acompañarnos en esta mañana. Welcome, Church of God. I invite you, um, there where you are, at home, you know, let's gather together and let us worship the Lord our God. Que brindas aliento a mi alma, cánticos de alabanza, levanto para ti. Y solo a ti te adoraré, y solo a ti me postraré, Señor, mi Salvador. En medio del dolor levantaré mis manos, en medio del sufrir victoria yo declaro porque eres mi Dios, mi Señor mi Rey, y de tu presencia nunca me apartaré, dame de tu poder, dame doble porción, quiero sentir tu fuego, tu fuego abrazador, Espíritu de Dios. Quebrántame hoy, te pido de rodillas, dame de tu calor. Y tú eres todo para mí, has tomado mi corazón y lo has hecho para ti. Y tú que brindas aliento a mi alma y cánticos de alabanza levanto para ti y solo a ti te adoraré y solo a ti me postraré Señor mi salvador en medio del dolor Levantaré mis manos en medio del sufrir Victoria yo declaro porque eres mi Dios Mi Señor mi Rey Y de tu presencia nunca me apartaré Dame de tu poder, dame doble porción Quiero sentir tu fuego, tu fuego abrazador Espíritu de Dios Quebrántame hoy, te pido de rodillas, dame de tu calor en medio del dolor. Levantaré mis manos en medio del sufrir. Victoria yo declaro porque eres mi Dios, mi Señor mi Rey. Y de tu presencia nunca me apartaré. Dame de tu poder, dame doble porción. Quiero sentir tu fuego, tu fuego abrazador, Espíritu de Dios. Quebrántame hoy, te pido de rodillas. Dame de tu calor en medio del dolor. Levantaré mis manos en medio del sufrir. Victoria yo declaro porque eres mi Dios, mi Señor, mi Rey. Y de tu presencia nunca me apartaré. Dame de tu poder, dame doble porción. Quiero sentir tu fuego, Espíritu de Dios. Quebrántame hoy, te pido de rodillas. En medio del dolor levantaré mis manos, en medio del sufrir, victoria yo declaro porque eres mi Dios, mi Señor miré y de tu presencia nunca me apartaré, dame de tu poder, dame doble porción, quiero sentir tu fuego. Tu fuego abrazador, Espíritu de Dios, quebrántame hoy, te pido de rodillas, dame de tu calor y adórale. En tu triste camina solamente adórale. Cuando ya no puedas más, solamente adórale. Esas caras que tú sientes se irán. 
solamente adórale en medio de la enfermedad solamente adórale cuando ya no puedas más solamente adórale esas cadenas que te atan se irán Si te sientes desmayar, oh, el secreto, el secreto es adorarle. Cuando ya no puedas, y cuando ya no puedas más, oh, el secreto es alabarle. Y si llega la enfermedad, si llega la enfermedad, el secreto es soledad. El secreto es cantarle. Solamente adórale en tu triste caminar. Solamente adórale cuando ya no puedas más. Solamente adórale y esas caras que tú sientes se irán. Solamente adórale en medio de la enfermedad. Solamente adórale cuando ya no puedas más. Solamente adórale y esas cargas que tú sientes se irán. Adórale. Solamente adórale en tu triste caminar. Solamente adórale cuando ya no puedas más. Solamente adórale y esas caras que tú sientes se irán. Oh, se irá. Solamente adórale en medio de la enfermedad. Solamente adórale cuando ya no puedas más. Solamente adórale esas cadenas que te atan. Se irá, oh, solamente, solamente adórale en tu triste caminar. Solamente adórale cuando ya no puedas más. Solamente adórale. Y esas cargas que tú sientes se irán. Solamente adórale en medio de la enfermedad. Solamente adórale cuando ya no puedas más. Solamente adórale esas cadenas que te atan se caerán. Only worship him. It is not easy. I remember the words that James said. 
rejoice in affliction. When we talk about rejoice in our affliction, we ask ourselves, how is it that we're going to be able to worship God when we're going through these situations? How is it that we're able to continue to worship God in singing when nobody knows what's happening in my life? How is it possible for me to be able to worship God? And that is what God calls us to do, for us to rejoice in all afflictions in life. I want to greet you, first of all, that... As you are gathered in your home to listen to the word of God, I want to greet all the congregation from here. A big hug, kisses to all of you. I miss all of you and all of the people that are watching us from many different places in, in Guatemala, Spain, many different places that are watching us you know, through online. Um, and a big hug to you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for... You know, for gathering together to listen to the Word of God. Today's message is going to be a different message that has to do about, you know, what is happening around us. But I don't want you to get distraught or down or, or saddened by the Word of God. But I want you to, you know, listen to God's Word. We need, we need a revival. Once again, during these times, in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 2, the Word of God tells us, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God, the Word of God tells us, O Lord God, your work in the midst of the times, let it be known, and your wrath, remember your mercy. And I'm going to read it once again. O Lord God, Revive your work in the midst of the times. Let it be known in our lives. And remember your mercy. And I believe that in the last times, the latter days, something um, great and amazing approaches us. And a holy passion for the heartbeat of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I believe that what is happening right now Yes, we are there's focus on all of this that is happening and a lot of the people who are ill around us. And we don't come to realize many a times we grow to be melancholy or, or, or sad or, or let's say a systematic type of feeling or emotion uh, overcoming of, of sadness in our lives. And let me tell you something. I believe that God's people should not be focused and what is happening around the world. But what we should be focused on instead is that presence of God in our lives because it is the presence of God that is going to make the difference in our lives. It is God's presence that's going to allow us to get out of these situations that we are in. And it is time for us to get out of melancholiness. And like the song was saying earlier, um, the God will break... May God may break the chains. And I believe that a time is approaching us. And for that heartbeat of the, you know, for working in the Holy Spirit in every single being, a uh, living person, right now, the, the families have been, in, in a sense, have been allowed to come together. Um, now the, the wife and, and, and the husbands are spending more time together. The mothers, the fathers, and you know, and the children are spending more time, they're gathering together more, but they're able to have an expression of mutual love. And there's been a lot of distancing um, because of some, you know, jobs where they were working. And the kids didn't know who dad was. The kids did not know who mom was. And let me tell you something. There were no relationship, the husband and the wife, the wife and the husband, and the kids and the parents. And now we are coming to have a passionate type love for every family and how beautiful it is that I believe that everything works out for the good the like scripture says everything works out for the good according to those that walk according to the word of God there is a love from the celestial father that is you know poured out for us that is through you know his love in other words we are entering, and you may not see it that way, 
we're entering into a revival. We're entering into an awakening. There is going to be a spiritual awakening in the church, in the homes, parents with their children, the children with their parents, etc., etc. There is going to be an awakening. A revival is coming now. The desire of God, the celestial Father, He yearns and desires to unleash upon us a demonstration of in this historic times that we are living in. What we need is this: for these men and women of God to arise during this time to the demonstrative work of power of the Holy Spirit, and I believe that we have the power. To be able to hold back what is happening in our homes, to hold back or stop what is happening in our lives, in our homes, this epidemic. Let's not run away from the epidemic. Let us confront it in the mighty name of Jesus. With the power of God, we are able to face this epidemic. And the Gospels register that the voice resounds from. Heaven, saying, "This is my beloved Son, who I am pleased in." God wants to demonstrate during this time that, that in the time of Elijah, the crisis that he endured, there was a man who held back the rain. And what did this man Elijah do when he rose up and awakened in the name of Jesus? God wants to show his Elijahs. God wants to show his Elijahs. God wants to show His Esthers and His Ruths, His Deborahs, and these times. It is time for the woman of God to get up and to get up as an Esther, as a Deborah. During these times, it is time for the Elijahs and the Elijahs of God will get up during these times that we are living in. And now, what we are confronting, the church needs to demonstrate a God who is alive. The Church of God needs to demonstrate that we believe in the God of Power, that we believe in the God that resurrects the dead. We need to demonstrate to the world, to the peoples of the world, that yes, there is a mighty Church, a powerful Church from God on this earth, presenting in this world that we are dressed with with、um, holiness, with power, and to say that he, these are my precious children. Who I love, we need to raise our voices, you know, from God. God wants to dress us with His goodness. God wants to dress us with His mercy, and God wants to crown us with holiness during this time that we are living in. And I want you to listen, Church of God. God is looking for. He is searching for intensely, so for His children to awaken. In Second Chronicles sixteen nine. Because the eyes of the Lord contemplate all the vastness of the earth to demonstrate His power in favor of those who have a perfect heart with Him. And I want to repeat it again: the passion of a heart that is for God is the key that the the、uh, the loosens and leashes all the power in His fullness to His children. The passion of a heart that is for God. We need to have passion. We need to have passion for God, and that right there is the key that is going to deliver to you the fullness of His presence and His power in the life of His children. And in the Book of Psalms, chapter thirty-eight, verse nine, the Word of God tells us, "Lord, before You are all my desires." In Psalm sixty-three, verse eleven, the Word of God says, "Lord, it's You." Early in the morning, I shall seek you. And Jeremiah is speaking in chapter five, verse one. The word of God tells us that I, you know, walk through the and search through the streets of Jerusalem, and I seen and search in all your places to see if you will find any man who does justice. Jeremiah chapter five, verse one, and I will forgive him. And even that God desires to to bless His people. This is what God wants to do. He wants to bless His people. And I believe that God wants to demonstrate to His church that He is a God of power. That the church of God is is a church of power. 
God wants to demonstrate to his people. He wants to bless his people. He wants to use them in this world. But the enemy always attempts to destroy them. Satan wants to curse the children you know, of God and to separate them from their divine destiny and inheritance. And Satan, he has, you know, grown very um, desperate to try to utilize this this epidemic, this, this invisible um, enemy. He tried to, you know, drown the children of God and try to allow them to hide under a bed, afflicted, tormented, intimidated, like there's no solution for them, as if there's no solution for their lives, and they're not going to get out of this, and they have, that they have forgotten that the God has, that they serve is a mighty God, and we have forgotten that God is, will be with us, and he will not forsake us, Satan is taking advantage to try to truncate or, or stop the children of God. To try to cause distress in their life so that they will lose the essence or the presence of God in their life. May God have mercy upon us. And that is why the he has attacked savagely so many families in trying to plant seeds of disagreement. With divisiveness, with division, and, and broken homes, broken families. And let me tell you something though. God is so beautiful. God has allowed the families to come together again. God has allowed the families to be restored to an intimacy that has been lost. And let me tell you, Church of God, that God is, you know, is gathering and picking up all the broken pieces in that woman's life. In that man's life, a family that was about to be divorced, about to be separated, he has allowed them to come together and be close in many people's, close in the homes for them to grow together. And it is sad that we have to go through these types of crises, these types of problems in life for God to do what he has to do in our lives. God have mercy. God wants to hold back. And I want you to listen to this. The hand of the enemy that is operating in our lives. God wants to break free any curse that has come upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Mark, and Satan comes and takes away the word that has been planted. The word of God, that God wants to plant in our heart, Satan comes to rebuke him, that he wants to take it away from us. And let me tell you something, I hope that you have the courage, the power, to tell the enemy, as Jesus Christ said in Matthew, you know, get away from before me, Satan. Say it with the power or the presence or the Holy Spirit of God. You tell the enemy, away from me, Satan. And you have fallen into crisis in your life and, and you are close in your home. And tell the enemy, Away from me, Satan, because I am going to get out of this crisis. I am going to get out of this situation because I know that the power of God is working in my life. Don't stay stuck right there. Get up for the glory of God. You need to shake everything loose from your life that needs to be away from you and, and tell Satan in the name of Jesus Christ, away from me, tell him with the power of God. And sadly, many people, many Christian believers, you know, they don't, they don't wait. We had to break this. This curse that has fallen upon the face of all this earth has to be held back, has to be stopped in the mighty name of Jesus. And they are not able to see the light because they are seeing the darkness. They're not searching for a great revival in the latter days, in the last times, because they're ideologies have conditioned them for them to not grow but for the evil and wicked to increase in their life and, and let me tell you something the fatal thing about all of this is that we instead of giving merit to god's omnipotence we don't and let me tell you something yes it is true a lot of people say they're saying that the the the, the sea will be rising and all of that yes but let me tell you something, God's righteousness will increase. And the, and, and the word of God says that 
the, the sin abounds, but it overabounds. The grace of God does. And the, the measure, and we see that the rising seas around the world, right? Let me tell you something. God is pouring out His mercy and His grace in the greater rising than that. God is sovereign, and God wants for you know His grace, His love to engulf the whole world. In the book of Psalm, chapter twenty-four, verse one, the the earth is the Lord and His vastness, and the world those who inhabit it. And if the Lord is the Lord of all the earth. That means that God has all control. If God is the owner of this world, and the Lord is your Lord, and the Lord is the Lord of your life, and the Lord is the Lord of your family, let me tell you this, friends and family who is hearing me, then God has everything under control. Everything has to be under the control of God. I want you to hear this. In any... Um, president or any governor or any institution of humanity should be under the sovereign reign of God. And I got to say this again. Every king, any president, any governor, any you know, institution of humanity should be under the, the reign, the sovereign reign of God. It doesn't matter you know, how strong or how extended or the reach it may seem that the plans and the times and let's say that the traps of man does nothing to the eyes of God. And let me tell you something, the second chronicles, um, every all the gods or the people are idols. And I want to tell you this. And I love this right here, people. God is taking away the idols for away from all the peoples. God is breaking the customs. God is breaking those traditions that men and women have adopted. God is taking all of that away from that. There's only one God that we should depend on, and that's the Lord of hosts. Nobody is going to do anything for you, not even the president, not even the governors. Yes, we have to be submitted to the earthly you know, you know, authorities. Yes, we had to be submitted to the voice of the president when he says, well, we're going to open or close. But the one who opens and closes is God. When God closes, there's nobody that can open. And when God opens, there's no one that can close them. And God is the only one that's going to end all of this. Nobody else. Yes, science is going to credit themselves. Look at what we did for the nations. We found the cure. We found the vaccine. We, we did this. We did that. Nothing moves, I want to tell you this, if it's not for the will of God. And they had to ask God for, the, the trees have to ask God for permission to move. The birds, you know, they sing to the Lord God. And nothing moves without the will of God. And if mankind continues to give credit to themselves, then nothing's going to happen. But when man you know, looks up and gives credit and glory to God, and God will begin to do things. That pagan king who said, look at the Babylon that I built. A little while after, he was eating grass as an animal. For seven years, this king was eating grass as the animal, the beast of the field. Because the glory is God. And this country needs to give glory to God. All the nations need to give glory to God. I want to tell you something. That the Bible says that all knee in heaven, uh, under heaven, on earth, and under the earth will have to bend their knee before the presence of God. And nobody will be able to escape from the presence of God. There are many people who mock this and are mocking or, or, or making fun of the church. And they make fun of the church because they say, oh, the church is closed. And, oh, you're a, you are a believer. You are a Christian. You are sick. And a lot of people mock the church, but a moment will come where we will see the glory of God. There's going to be a time where we're going to be able to enjoy in the presence of God, but we're here, church of God. You need to get up. Show your family. Show the, 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 the unbelievers that you are a child of God, that you are not destroyed. 
that you are in victory. I know it's not easy. I know it's difficult. But you have to be brave. The Apostle Paul said, I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. And I know that you have gone through a trying time in your life. I know that you feel pressure. I know that you are stressed out. And you ask yourself, where is God? God is inside of you. If you have accepted Christ as your Savior, then God is inside of you. All you need to do is get up for the glory of God. Believe me that God is doing something great in your life. Wow. I want you to hear this. God is the, the Lord of history. He is the, the Lord of the story. And Habakkuk understood this right here. He understood who God was, who God is. He understood that the people of God has sinned and that they were under the judgments of God. Habakkuk understood that the people were down, they were in destruction because they had disobeyed God. He knew that Habakkuk understood that he in his prayer says, Lord, you know, revive your work. I believe that, that we need to ask God to revive your work. And he asked God to enter and to his people with a renewed manifestation of his power. Look at the the prayer of Habakkuk. We need a renovation. We need your presence once again, you know, in our lives. And I believe that we had to say it and it hurts to say it. When churches or Christians, we have lost sight of God's presence. We have lost sight of God in our lives. We don't even know when God visits us or not. And we are, we're too comfortable in the congregations. We have everything. But what we are missing in our lives is the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The presence of God in our lives. It's about time that God's people, instead of hiding, go out and demonstrate who God is. There are so many lives who are being lost. There's so many lives that are sick, and we need people to get up for the glory of God and to speak about Christ. That sadly, you know, we had to be behind Christians, etc., etc., pursuing them and trying to give them, you know, a pat on the back and try to, you know, we should be the strong people. We are God's children. We are the one who has the power of God. We have the presence of God. We have the gospel of truth, the gospel of God. What are we doing in this time? Habakkuk says that we need a renewed manifestation of the power of God. Habakkuk understood that these people of God would not survive if the Lord would not intervene in their lives. And he understood that. You know, we're pouring out of his grace and his Holy Spirit. And we can ask ourselves the same question now. Would we, would the people of God survive through this? Will we know that the people of God, in this time, will we get up during this time and rise up as a mighty people Oh God, well, we need to ask God to intervene in our lives. We need to ask God to pour out His grace. We need to ask God that His Holy Spirit will move in our lives and lift us up. What we do ourselves to ourselves, we bury ourselves into a chaotic situation and we are not realizing that we are losing the presence of God in our lives. We're waiting for a solution. We are waiting for man to intervene. We are waiting for a cure, or a treatment for this situation. Or what Christian believers should be doing is waiting on God. When Christians should be depending on God, the only solution is God for our lives. We need God's grace. Look at what Habakkuk prayed for. In this time of affliction, that the Lord is compassionate, that the Lord will remember mercy. As a pastor, it hurts me to see so much crisis in God's people. It hurts.
hurts me to see so many illnesses. It hurts me to see people at the point of death. That the doctor does not, you know, confirm to them that there is going to be more life for them. We need to ask God, Lord, and remember and wrath remember mercy. We need to ask God for God to forgive us. Because we have failed God. And let me tell you something. This, the people of God here, they were down. Destruction all around them. These people here needed a revival. We need a, a spiritual uplifting. This people here was in chaos here in Habakkuk this time. But the church now, we rejoice in the devotional singing and the worship singing and all of this and that. But let me tell you something. Something more important is needed in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit's presence in our life. We need the glory of God amongst us. We need to see the manifestation of the glory of God in our lives. We need to see that God's Holy Spirit is bringing souls to this enclosure. That God is restoring people. We need to see the youth of God fill with God. Elderly people fill with God. We need to see the glory of God during this time. And let me tell you something. We are needing of a renovation. We are needing of a spiritual uplifting. God is going to shake these people. And the sad thing is that God was going to shake the people of Judah with a nation, enemy nation, with the Babylonian. God was going to shake the people of Judah. And God was going to use the idolatrous, uh, the, the, the pagan um, Babylonians to punish Judah. Can you imagine the condition, the state of this people? What we're needing is for men and women to rise up during these times to intercede in prayer for the mercy of God instead of complaining, instead of crying. Let's get up in the name of Jesus with a strong arm to intercede for a people who has gone astray, who has walked away from God, a people who needs a revival, a people who needs to be resolved perhaps is allowing this epidemic to come to the home and God is allowing this epidemic to touch our homes, to touch our husband, our wife, your kids, and perhaps a family member. God is allowing this to happen. And why is it that God is allowing this to happen? Because God wants to hear where are the Elijahs. God wants to know where God's Elijahs are at. God wants to hear the voices of these men down here on this earth. God wants to hear the voices of Esther, of Deborah during these times. And that is why God is allowing this to happen in our households, people. We are here with, a, with, a, with, sad, with, with sadness and, 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 and melancholiness. We need to be shaken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are rising up. We are awakening for the glory of God. And as a believer, we should pray to God and supplicate to God to manifest His power once again. We need to ask God during this time so that to His people come life and an awakening, a revival. And so that to, you know, Elijah will, will cry out to God. And they're very sad. There are many so-called Christians doing whatever they feel like doing in their life. In their spiritual life, they're living the life, you know, the way they feel like it. And, and a lot of the times, God has to send these epidemics to wake us up, to get our attention during these times. We have ignored what God is doing. God is shaking the foundations of our lives. There's a lot of suffering. And the church of God is, is falling down. It's diminishing spiritually. And the families, uh, children, separation, divorce, all over the place. And the church is very indifferent or, or care less. We have lost the holiness 
you know, to live in holiness in the people of God, and we don't want to live in holiness anymore. And then we ask ourselves, why is this happening? We don't notice that we're always criticizing other people. We are slandering other people's names and about other people. And then we ask ourselves, God, why is this happening to me? Because we don't realize the spirit of self-justification is overcome us, and we don't realize we're criticizing the unbelievers, but we don't you know, recognize our own personal condition. And we are criticizing everybody out there, but as believers, as Christians, we don't realize that we're not as good. You know, we're not as good. Any little thing bothers me. Any little thing upsets you or makes you angry. And when things happen to your life, we ask the Lord, "Why this? Why that? Don't you realize that God wants to get something out of your life? Don't you realize that God wants to renew your life? Don't you realize that God wants to wake you up? He wants you to be a man or a woman who is holy for Him. Divorce. We can talk about divorces, and we can spend the whole day talking about divorce, right? Christians divorcing one another and, and getting remarried just like like it's nothing. And they divorce themselves like, like change them with with a T-shirt. And they're all over the place. And they think that that God is not looking at the condition of their lives. We think that God is blind; He's wearing a blindfold. We think that God is not seeing the indifference that we have towards each other. We think that God doesn't see those things. And let me tell you something: we at times. We try to demonstrate a, a a spirit of self righteousness, and we need to hold back for a moment, and we need to ex- evaluate ourselves, because if this epidemic is hitting for them, and then they get out of this, another worse one will come. God's plan has not been reached yet. Let me tell you something, and it may be that the cure would would appear for what this current you know pathogen that we have, right? But let me tell you something, God. It's going to prepare something else for the future. This is only an awakening. You have seen different you know, flus and epidemics that have happened over the course of history, right? But let me tell you, storms and more storms. You know, a lot of the time we are the people that we pray. We're the holiest people in the world. We fast the most right now during these times. But when all of this ha- passes, we're going to get grow to be indifferent. We're not going to care no more. We're gonna enter into a state of antipathy that we have. We're gonna enter into a state of grumbling, of or slandering, of garbage that we were living in before this happened. And right now, during this time, during this trying times of epidemic, we are the most compassionate people, the most merciful people. And then when this leaves us, when the epidemic goes away, we're gonna go back to our old ways. The old ways. We're gonna be angry people. We're gonna be bothered. We're gonna be divisive. Lack of love, lack of forgiveness, etc., etc., etc. So then we put on a a, a cape or or a clothing of spirituality. We say we are untouchable people. I cannot be touched. Nothing is not gonna happen to me. Let me tell you something. There is a God in heaven who knows everything about you. We can deceive the whole world, but we cannot deceive God. God knows us. We can try to disguise ourselves and try to deceive people, but we cannot deceive God. The psalmist said, "Where would I go from your presence? Where would I go from your spirit?" And if I go here, you're gonna be there. If I go up there, you're gonna be there with me. You're gonna be wherever I go. God knows it all. The church is indifferent. There's a lack of love. And many other things that we can mention, and there's a lot of pride, a lot of arrogance in the churches, in Christians, in believers. There's a lot of arrogance, and we need to re- we need to stop that. Remember, there was one that fell from heaven. His name was Satan. He was conceited. He was arrogant, and God kicked him out of there. He threw him down. And arrogance, what it does is distances God's presence from our life. And the Bible says that God looks from close 
the humble, but the arrogant God sees from far away. So we need to we, we need to come back to Jesus Christ. How many say amen? The, the word of God says in Isaiah 2.12, because the day of the Lord will come upon all the arrogant uh, and all those who exalt themselves. And Malachi says, because the day, the burning day, the wrathful day will come as a burning furnace and all the arrogant and all evildoers will be, you know, will be touched and that they will be embracing them and it will not let them live. And God's going to, in other words, is going to rob them of that peace they have. And let me let us ask God to revive in us during these times and uplift their spirits. It is time for God to take control of our lives. I want to tell you in the book of John, He the teacher is here. And God calls us during these times. And when and he got up suddenly, he came to him. Talking about Mary. Come to Christ, Father God. This word was very strong. It was a solid word from you. It was a word that many people perhaps did not expect. But let me tell you, this is the word that we need in our lives this moment this is a word that that calls us to to awaken and to be conscious of and have the awareness of what is happening around us we need the uplifting of our spirits god we need to go back to god's holiness we need to come back to you god we need to remove from us that you know appearance of seemingly being spiritual but we need to be real god so that you can do amazing things in our lives father god forgive us father forgive that life that is at home that life that is observing us right now that is watching us forgive the church forgive the ministers we need to come back to you god today revive in us your work that you have for us that life that is accepting you as your savior right now accept that life god that is coming back to you, that is reconciling that life right now, that is asking you for forgiveness. Embrace them, God. Hug them. Take them in your hands, God. Tell them. Let them know that you died for them, that you went to the cross for them, that you shed your blood for them, and let them know they're not alone because they have come back to you. And they want to come back to you, men, the woman who is, who is there, you who is there. Let it be healing for your life, children, let it be healing for you. Uh, we're here at 7-Eleven, East 4th Street, West Liberty, Iowa. The doors of the church are open for you. If you want to come back to God, if you want to come back to the Lord, we invite you here. You know, once the church reopens here, we're going to be here for you. And, you know, let me tell you something. The Word of God is it, going to be strong. It's going to be it's going to be calm, but hey, it's the Word of God. The Word of God is going to come to your life. It's going to come to your life. The Lord bless you. He keep you. The Lord shine His face before you. Have mercy upon you. He show His face before you. Place peace in you. And you're going to place the name of your uh, God upon your children. I want to bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hugs to all of you, church. I love you, church of God. Praise God. Y como llama de fuego, quémame. Espíritu Santo, saturame. Y de tu unción, lléname, Señor. Yo anhelo. Tu presencia hoy como ya como llama de fuego quémame Espíritu Santo saturame y de tu unción lléname Señor es que yo anhelo tu presencia hoy quiero más de ti y 
más de ti yo quiero más de ti y más de ti yo quiero más de ti y más de ti yo quiero yo quiero más de ti y más de ti yo quiero más de ti y más de ti yo quiero más de ti y más de ti yo quiero más de ti más de ti yo quiero más de ti Chris God he had not received Ricardo, you're seeing us right now. We want you to receive Christ. We want you to, Ricardo, we want you to receive Christ as your Savior. We know that God is your hope and only Christ in your life. I know that you're going through a tough time in your life, but this moment Christ wants to come to your life. Let God touch you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, go there where this man, Ricardo Jimenez, is right now. I want you to touch him right now. For your glory and honor, in the name of, of Jesus Christ, if you have need prayer for your life, we want to pray for you so that God can touch your life. Praise God. Y como llama de fuego, Espíritu Santo de tu unción, yo quiero más Señor. Como llama de fuego, Espíritu Santo de tu unción, yo quiero más Señor. Como llama de fuego, Espíritu Santo de tu unción, yo quiero más Señor. Como llama de fuego, Espíritu Santo de tu unción, yo quiero y más de ti yo quiero más de ti Señor y más de ti yo quiero más de ti y más de ti yo quiero más de ti y más de ti yo quiero más de ti